You wait to see. As soon as it gets up to a dollar and a half gallon, you'll see all the gas you want. There will be no more lines. Come on, gas. Tomorrow morning. Get up and see. In the 1970s, OPEC, the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, tightened the spigot on oil shipments, causing a real shortage and sending the economy into a panic. Gasoline prices shot up dramatically, ending the era of 30 cent per gallon gas forever. This is the story of the MPG gas guzzlers of 1973. During the oil embargo of the 1970s, shortages cropped up and service stations closed when they ran out of gas, which was often. Lines would often start forming well before the stations ever opened. It was an ugly time. Needless to say, sales of big cars and trucks fell like an anvil down the elevator shaft. If your experience with any of these vehicles involved consuming more or less fuel than we're about to show you here, then let us know. Leave your comments below. Introducing the solid feeling for 73. Introducing the new Buicks. The Buick Riviera. It was a personal luxury car that was marketed by Buick from 1963 to 1999 with the exception of the 1994 model year. As General Motors' first entry into the personal luxury car market segment, the Riviera was highly praised by automotive journalists upon its high-profile debut. With a curb weight of 5,101 pounds, a 455 cubic inch V8, and 260 horsepower, this beast averaged 9 miles per gallon. Monte Carlo by Chevrolet. Certainly its elegant styling has much to do with its success, but there's a reason for Monte Carlo's popularity that has to do with elegance of another kind. Next on the list is the Chevrolet Monte Carlo. Deriving its name from the city of Monaco, the Monte Carlo was marketed as the first personal luxury car of the Chevrolet brand. Introduced for the 1970 model year, the model line was produced across six generations through 2007, with a hiatus from 1989 through 1994. Monte Carlo was a closely aligned variant of the Pontiac Grand Prix through its entire production. With a curb weight of 3,883 pounds, a 454 cubic inch V8, and 245 horsepower, the Monte Carlo came in at 9 miles per gallon. A combination of engineering changes have been incorporated into the Toronado's powertrain, significantly improving fuel economy. Next on our list is the Toronado. With heavily revised styling from its first generation, the Toronado transitioned from a GT-style car into a more luxury car. It was now more similar to the Cadillac Eldorado than the Buick Riviera, with styling taking several cues from the 1967 through 70 Eldorado. With a curb weight of 4,841 pounds, a 455 cubic inch V8, and 250 horsepower, this front-wheel drive only achieved 8.5 miles per gallon. Next on the list, the Ford Thunderbird. The sixth generation of the Ford Thunderbird is a large personal luxury coupe and was produced from 1972 through 1976. Almost a Lincoln, the 1973 Ford Thunderbird was one of Ford's biggest passenger cars to date, and it sold like no other bird before it. That move paid off big time for Ford, with sales increasing from 36,055 to 57,814. The 1973 model year was Ford's hottest yet for its personal luxury coupe. A sibling of the Continental Mark IV, this generation of the Ford Thunderbird was the largest ever produced, weighing in at 4,797 pounds. With 212 horsepower, this behemoth rated at 8.5 miles per gallon. The engine advancements give you finer performance from start to stop. I like the traction and stability of front-wheel drive. Next on the list is the Cadillac Eldorado. 
The ninth generation El Dorado was substantially redesigned, growing two inches in length, six inches in wheelbase, and featuring standard fender skirts, all of which gave the car a much heavier appearance. For 1973, the car featured a massive egg crate grille, new front and rear bumpers, a new deck lid, rear fenders, and tail lamps. Oddly enough, the 1973 El Dorado was chosen as the official pace car for the Indianapolis 500 in 1973. It was only the second time Cadillac had been afforded the honor. The first time was in 1931, but it was still odd. For 1972, the official pace car had been the Hearst Olds Cutlass. For 1974, it would again be a Hearst Olds Cutlass. Cadillac wouldn't be given the Racing Oval's honor again until 1992, when its two-door Alante received the nod. The 500 cubic inch 8.2 liter V8 remained an El Dorado exclusive. At 5,012 pounds and only 235 horsepower, this beast rated at 7.5 miles per gallon. The 1973 Continental Mark IV, newly minted in silver. Introducing the 1973 Continentals. It is a very good year. Next on the list, the Continental Mark IV. The third generation of the Mark series, the Mark IV grew in size over its Continental Mark III predecessor. As with the previous generation, the Mark IV saw little direct competition in the American marketplace, competing nearly exclusively against the Cadillac El Dorado, which was redesigned for 1971. With a curb weight of 5,134 pounds, a 460 cubic inch V8, and only 212 horsepower to pull this land yacht, it only achieved 7.5 miles per gallon. Our Lincoln Continental four-door sedan and coupe, designed for an even more comfortable ride than our 72. Last on our list, and the beast with the least when it comes to miles per gallon, is the Lincoln Continental. For the 1970 model year, Lincoln introduced the fifth generation Lincoln Continental. Building on the success of the Mark III introduced the year before, Lincoln sought to modernize the Continental for the 1970s after a nine-year production run. Although shorter in wheelbase and slightly narrower than the 1958 through 1960 Lincolns, the addition of five mile per hour bumpers make 1970 through 1979 Lincolns the longest automobiles ever produced by Ford. With a curb weight of 5,282 pounds, a 460 cubic inch V8, and 212 horsepower, this big boy was rated the worst for 1973 at a measly 7 miles per gallon. Well, what'd you think? Did you own one of these cars? And what kind of mileage did you get? Or maybe you have a family member who's um, driving one of these big boys around. What are they getting for gas mileage? We want to know. Leave your comments below. Again, thanks to all our subscribers for helping support our channel. We are growing and growing and we owe it all to you guys. So thank you very much. If you're not a subscriber, please help us out. Subscribe to our channel. It's absolutely free. Like, subscribe and hit the bell. This is Michael J with the Boca Brothers. We will catch you again next weekend.